Hello, my little mathematicians. Today we are going to practice solving addition and subtraction equations. First off, you'll hear this term inverse operations. An inverse operation is operations that undo each other. Okay, and we do that when solving equations. So we need to know what's the inverse operation of addition, subtraction. Meaning that if we see something being added, maybe we'll subtract it to get it to go away. Um, and then the inverse of subtraction, you guessed it, is addition. So what do you think is the inverse of multiplication? Division. And what's the inverse of division? Multiplication. Okay, today we're only going to focus on um, addition and subtraction equations, though. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is how do you solve a one-step equation? We first isolate, meaning get by itself, the variable by doing the inverse operation that we just talked about up above. And then we check our answer by plugging your solution... back into your original equation to see if you get a true statement. If you end up with a true statement, you'll know that you got the correct answer. Now, true statement is if you end with something like seven equals seven or eight equals eight. But if you end with like 10 equals seven, that's an untrue statement, then you know that the answer you got isn't right. You wanna erase and try again. Okay, um, this is kind of what we did the other day when we tried to see if this was a solution um, to the certain equation. That's technically you are checking your work for someone else. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I want to do is I want to draw a line down from the equal sign. It doesn't seem like a big deal now, but later on as they get more complicated, it'll definitely help keeping one side separate from the other. Okay. So I look at where my variable is, and I want to get rid of the thing that's with it. This plus 4 is preventing my variable from being by itself. So what's the inverse of plus 4? Minus 4. Now it cancels and goes away. But whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other, so it's balanced out. Because if you like think of you have two things that are totally equal, and then all of a sudden this one gets heavier because you took some out of this one, now it's out of balance. So if I subtracted some from this side, I need to also subtract some from this side so then they go back into balance again, okay? Like the counterweight. So since I subtracted four from this side, I need to subtract four from the other side as well. Now those cancel and I have x equals, well, what's 10 minus four? Six, okay? So I got the variable all by itself. Now I'm gonna check my answer to see if it's right. So you have x, plus four equals 10, that's my initial equation, and I'm just going to replace what I think the variable is equal to. I think the variable should be a six, right? So I'm gonna replace the x with a six, and then everything else stays the same. Now six plus four is 10, bring down the other side, you get 10 equals 10, that's a true statement. So with certainty, I would write x equals six in the answer column because I know that it's correct. Now this line right here, they want you to practice graphing. So I'm gonna put the answer in the middle and then one number bigger and one number smaller and you just put a dot at six. So this is same six. Sorry, the cat wants to be a pianist and it does not play very well. <laughs> okay, so right here, my answer is six. Let's move on to example two. Example two, again, let's please draw a line down. And right here, this is where my variable is. I want to get rid of this two. It's a positive two, so the opposite of that is I'm going to subtract two. Whatever you do to one side, do to the other. Now those cancel and you just have X. And now you have 14 minus two, which is 12. So I think the answer is 12. So you have two plus X equals 14. 
Um, I'm going to replace the X with what I think it is. I think X is 12. Let's see if we get a true statement. Well, 2 plus 12 is 14. 14 equals 14. Awesome. So I know that 12 is indeed the correct answer. So let's put it on the graph. One number bigger, one number smaller, and there's a dot right at 12. Okay. And then when they say graph your solution, that's all you do. You just put a dot at that number. It'll make more sense when we get to inequalities as to why we do this. Okay. My next one. I'm going to draw a line down for my equal sign. And then this is where my variable is. It's on this side this time. So in order to get it by itself, I need to subtract seven. Whatever you do to one side, do to the other. Now those cancel and you have X equals, well, what's 12 minus seven? It's five. Okay, now I know that a lot of you guys could do this in your head, but we're practicing showing the inverse step so that when they get more complicated, you are a master at doing it, okay? So you guys got five, and now here's my original equation. I'm just gonna replace the X with the five, and then five plus seven is 12. There you go, there's a true statement. And again, once we start adding in like positives and negatives um, next year, checking your work will become more and more important, okay? So right now we're building the skills for when they get harder, you have all the steps down pat. Okay, and there we go, my solution was five, so I drew a dot at five. Now, for the ones we've done so far, they've all been adding, right? So then I did the inverse of subtracting, but this time I'm subtracting the five from the X, so the inverse of subtracting is to add, right? And now you have five minus five is zero. Those go away, X is by itself. And whatever you do to one side, do to the other. And now you have nine plus five is 14. Okay, my initial equation was X minus five equals nine. I'm just gonna replace my X with what I think it's equal to. I think it's equal to 14. And then you have 14 minus five is nine. Bring down your equals nine. True statement. So with certainty, you know the answer is 14. One number bigger, one number smaller. Okay. Um, my next one, I'm gonna draw a line down for my equals sign. Here's where my variable is. I wanna get rid of that minus 10. The inverse of subtracting 10 is to add 10. And 10 minus 10 is zero, they cancel. So X is now by itself, which was my goal to isolate the variable. But whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. And 30 plus 10 is 40. Here's my initial equation. I'm gonna replace my variable with what I think it's equal to. I think the answer is 40. 40 minus 10 is 30. Bring down your equals 30, and there we go, true statement. So the correct answer is indeed 40. So I would put 40 in the answer column. And if they asked you to graph, that's all you do. All right, last one. If you haven't tried any by yourself yet, at least try this one. Pause the video, try it yourself, and make sure you do all the steps, and then unpause it and come back. Okay, you drew a line down from your equal sign. Here's your x. This is what I want to get rid of. The inverse of minus 16 is to add 16 because 16 minus 16 is zero. Now I got my goal of getting X by itself, but whatever you do to one side, you got to do to the other. 16 plus three is 19. And then you want to check. So three equals X minus 16 was my initial equation. I'm just going to replace my variable with what I think it is. I think X is 19. Bring down your three equals 19 minus 16 is three. True statement. If you got it right, good job. Okay, the correct answer is 19. So you'd write 19 in the answer column. And if they asked you to graph it, it would look like this. Um, the only trap is go slowly. And when you check your work, um, make sure you write 19 in the answer column and not three, right? This was just to see if it ended with a true statement, but the correct answer is actually 19. That's what you're checking. Is 19 the solution? If you get a true statement, 
then yes, 19 was the solution. Okay, don't put this. That's the one thing that I strongly recommend when you go to look in your answer column is double check that you put all of these in the answer column and not right here when you're checking your work. Okay, and if you do check your work and you get an untrue statement, please erase it and try again. That was the whole point of checking your answer. If it doesn't end with a true statement, then you did something wrong over here. If you got all those correct, congratulations. You know how to solve equations involving addition and subtraction.